Hello and welcome back to another Flutter tutorial. In this video, I'll be showing how to parse RSS feeds in Flutter and show it in a list view. Okay, so let's start. The first thing we need is to add the plugins. So open your pubspec.yaml file, go to the dependencies and add these plugins. A link to these plugins will be provided in the description. The HTTP plugin is used to fetch a feed. The web feed plugin is used to parse a feed. The cache network image plugin is used to cache the image and the URL launcher plugin is used to open the feed in a separate web browser or a web view controller. So once you have added all these plugins, run the flutter packages get in the terminal to install the packages. Okay. Now let's create a new file. I'm going to name it rssdemo.dart. Now let's import the necessary packages. We need the material package, the web feed package, the HTTP package, the URL launcher package, and the cache network image. Okay, now let's create the widget. Then I'm going to add this file in the main.dart file so that this file will launch first. Okay. So our basic widget is ready. But we don't have an UI yet. Before that, let's grab the RSS feed URL. So I'm going to get the NASA RSS feed URL. I'm going to image of the day. So that's the URL. Copy it and create a static constant string feed URL and paste in there. Okay, now we need a RSS feed variable. I'm gonna name it underscore feed and a title. So that will be the app or title. This will be displaying the progress. Okay, now let's write the function to get the feed. So load feed. I'm going to wrap it inside a try catch block to catch servers. First, get the client from HTTP. Next, final response is equal to await client dot get with our field URL. Okay. Now we need to parse the URL, so we'll be getting the XML string. So get the body from the response and parse it. Now we are going to return this because it is expecting a future RSS feed. So if there is some error, we are going to return null. Now let's build the UI. So scaffold, APA. So for now, we are just displaying the title. Okay. And overwrite the init state. So the first thing is we need to initialize the title. So let me write a new function that will update the title. So update title, the variable will be title and set state underscore title is equal to title. Okay, let me call it inside the init state with the value widget or title. So that's the widget or title. Okay, so let me write a similar function for the feed variable as well. So update feed okay underscore feed is equal to feed now let's write a new function load which is an asynchronous function and call update title with a value let me declare a new constant static constant string i'm gonna say loading feed message so loading feed okay pass in there and we are going to call the load feed function. So on result, we are going to check if the result is null or if it is empty. We are going to update the title. So update title. I'm going to declare a new variable feed load error message, which will say error loading feed. Okay. So pass in there, 
and return else if everything is okay i'm going to update the feed variable and update the title as well with feed dot title so get the title from the past feed okay so once we have that we are going to call this method in the init state so go to the init state and call load okay so if you refresh the app you should see the title so title is there now we are going to build the rest of the ui okay so we'll be building a list with the parsed rss feed so the list row will have a title so let's write a function to return a text widget with the title okay let's give a style so text style with font size 18.0 font weight w let's say 500 and maximum lines 2 and overflow ellipsis okay so similarly we will have the subtitle as well for subtitle we will change the font size to 14 font weight to w100 maximum lines to 1 okay so we will be showing a thumbnail also in each list row so let's create a function for that pass in the url so that will be the image url we're going to return a padding widget with left padding 15 and child which will have a cached network image with a placeholder so for placeholder i have an image in my assets so let me show that we need to declare the assets in the pubspec.yaml file so i have it declared in the assets section so that's the images folder and that's the image no underscore image dot png okay so let me declare a new variable placeholder image so the path will be images slash no underscore image dot png okay copy that and use it as the placeholder now we need to set the other properties the image url so that will be the url so let me rename that to image url okay now we need to set the height i'm setting it to 50 width to 70 alignment to alignment dot center and fit to box fit dot fill okay now we need a right icon for each list row so let's write a function for that that will return an icon with image a right arrow okay and in gray color with size of 30 okay okay now we will create the list itself so list view dot builder with item count feed start item start length the item builder which will have the build context and the index okay so let me get the item first so feed dot items of index now we need to return a widget for each list row so i am returning a list style with title we'll call a function with item dot title that will return a text widget so similarly for subtitle we will call subtitle we will pass in the published date and for leading we will add the thumbnail so let's get the thumbnail url so that's one item inside that you can see thumbnail is inside enclosure so item dot enclosure dot url okay and the trailing we will add the arrow so right icon and we will give some padding so edge inserts dot all five and the on tap property let's leave it empty for now okay 
Now let's write a new function body to create the body of the UI. So before that, we need a function to check if the field is empty. So I'm going to check if the field is null or field.items is null. That's going to return true. Now we are going to use it inside the body function. We are going to check if the field is empty. We are going to show a circular progress indicator. So a center widget, which I will circular progress indicator. Okay, otherwise we are going to show the list. All right. Okay, so let me add the body to the UI. Okay, so refresh the app, you will see the list. Okay, now let's add a pull to refresh to the list. So wrap it inside a refresh indicator. All right, the error is because we didn't provide the on refresh function. Okay, on refresh, I'm going to call the function load. All right, so error is gone. So it's important to provide a key for the refresh indicator. So let me create a key. So global key, refresh indicator state, refresh key. Okay, let's initialize that. Refresh key is equal to new global key refresh indicator state okay so let's supply the key to the refresh indicator and restart the app so if you try to pull and see that it's loading again now the next thing we are going to do is to add a click to the row and open the field inside a browser or a safari view controller inside the app okay so let's write a new function open feed so the URL launcher plugin is going to be used here. So if you want to see what URL launcher plugin can do, I have a separate tutorial on that. I'll be providing the link in the description. Okay, so here called launch with the URL and force Safari view controller to true and force web view to false. This will open the web browser inside the app itself. Okay, so return. Otherwise, if there is some error, we are going to update the title so let me declare a new variable feed open error message error opening feed and pass in there all right and on top of the list row we are going to call this function open feed with item dot link okay so restart that so when you click on the row, it's going to open a web browser inside the app. So that will have the basic controls to reload and close the web view. Also the reader mode is also available. Okay. So the basic controls are provided by the URL launcher plugin itself. Okay. So the web feed plugin can be used to parse RSS feeds and item feeds as well. So I'll be providing the link to the GitHub repository in the description of this video along with other plugins. So uh, this was a basic demo of how to parse a RSS feed. So this plugin can be used to parse item feed as well. So that's all in this video. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Hit the bell icon for notifications. Also, please leave your valuable comments in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.